slope fields. So definitely for slope fields, you want to look at section 6.1, I think it is, or 6.2, I don't remember exactly which one, but one of those will remind you how to draw slope fields, and that's going to be part of this kind of question for sure. So the first part is, on the axis provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation. They give you a y prime, and then here's your function for it. Um, and they want you to find those eight points of the slope field, so you're drawing on those eight points. So what I did right here, let's see. Um, so those eight points I listed out, so negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 1. So if you don't list every single point out, it's okay, but you do want to list most of them, and you want to make sure that your slope field has some sort of pattern that makes sense, okay? So like we said before, it doesn't have to be symmetrical, but you'll see a pattern, and it should... Um, it should develop as you're drawing the slope field and it'll feel good. Like you draw it and you're like, yeah, that looks good. If it makes no sense, then you probably drew your little slopes wrong, okay? So how did I do this? So after I listed each point, I literally take that X and that Y value and I plug it into the equation that they give me for my, my dy over dx. So one plus, if Y is zero and X is negative two, you would get 1 over negative 2, and that's why right here it says dy over dx equals negative 1 half. So you can see that I just plugged in all of these xy's into the function that they gave me for dy over dx, and then I got my little tiny slopes. Each slope, I go ahead and draw in here. So let's say this one is negative 1, 0. So at negative 1, 0, my slope is negative 1. Negative 1, I want to make it look like perfectly diagonal, okay? Do these have to be absolutely perfect? No, but they have to look pretty good. So the difference between a negative one and a negative two is, um, you know, slight, but you wanna be able to tell that difference, okay? So I go ahead and draw my slope field. It looks pretty good, it looks symmetric. It doesn't have to be symmetric, but for this one, it is. I can see my zero slopes are definitely horizontal. So that's gonna be two points total, just drawing your slope field. Okay, um, the second part of this question says, find a particular solution, y equals f of x, to the differential equation with the initial condition, and then they give you an x, y value, and state the domain of that um, y equals. Okay, so if I want a particular solution, I'm gonna look here. So what I can do is just like before, I can go ahead and get all the x's on one side, isolate all the y's to the other side, and then I can um, integrate both sides. Um, so that's going to be a solution y equals, right? I have dy, I want to go backwards. So I want to integrate both sides. So I'm going to start with my original function that they give me for dy over dx. All my y's go on the left side, all my x's go on the right side, and then I integrate both sides. So that step is going to be a point, and then integrating is going to be a point. Integrating correctly with your plus c is also going to be two points. So integrating correctly is usually a point, and then your plus c is usually another point. Okay, so you do have to be careful with this, because for a lot of the problems, it goes in order. So like if you don't integrate, then you will basically not get any points after that. Or if you don't have a plus c, then after this step, you're not going to get any points after that. So there's, there's a highest number of points you can get if you don't integrate or if you don't have a plus c. Even if you do everything and then you get a wrong c or you integrate incorrectly, that's better than not integrating. That's better than not having a constant. So just be careful about that. Okay, so I integrate, I have natural log of absolute value 1 plus y, and then on the right side, I got my natural log of absolute value of x. Is it always a natural log? No, you just have to know how to integrate um, every little different thing, right? If this was just an x, then this would be 1 half x squared, right? So just take the antiderivative, okay, and then my plus c. And then I did it in one step, but you can not write this at all, or you can do it in another step. I said, okay, if I have natural log on both sides, I'm going to e both sides. 
so e to the power of. So e, e, okay, this is going to be the absolute value of 1 plus y equals, and then I kind of skipped a step here, so this would be e to the power of the absolute value of x times e to the power of c, right? So when you have a power with the same base, the power is getting added, you can do e to the x times e to the c, something like that. So then I said, okay, so basically that's happening. e to the c power, though, is really just c. e to the constant is just some sort of constant, so I just call it a constant. I don't need a plus or minus because the constant is already plus or minus. Okay, so then I have absolute value equals absolute value. Okay, I am solving for y, though. So then I take my answer, or sorry, I um, take away my uh, absolute value here. Normally, if I take away the absolute value on the left side, I would have a plus or minus. But again, c is already a plus or minus, so I don't need a plus or minus there. So y plus 1 equals, and then some number times the absolute value. All right. And then I subtract 1 from both sides right here. And then they say there's an initial condition of f of negative 1 equals 1. So f of negative 1 equals 1, I can go ahead and plug in a negative 1, and I should get a 1. So my x value, I plug in negative 1. My y value is supposed to be 1. So that's going to be a point just to realize that you have to plug in that initial condition. And then I solve and get c equals 2. Okay, so I go back to over here, and then I rewrite y equals, instead of c, it's a 2. So y equals, or f of x equals, 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1. This is my solution, my y equals, for the original differential equation. So this is going to be a point. Okay, and then they ask you for the domain. So I have trouble with this sometimes, but I tried to draw it out for you. So this, you need to realize, this function itself, if we don't write a domain for it, is not differentiable. Why is this not differentiable? Because this is an absolute function, absolute value function. This is a V. If you draw it, it looks like a V. That's not differentiable. It has a corner right down here. So that means we need to define a part of this function that is differentiable, that we can take the derivative of. So we can't take the derivative of that corner. We can take the derivative of the left side or the right side. It's going to be differentiable either over here or over here. But they tell you the initial condition where x is negative 1. So that means x is negative values. Okay, then x is all of these negative values. So the domain is from negative infinity to 0. So there you go, negative infinity to 0. Um, good luck, and I'm sorry that I'm sounding sick. Uh, that is it. Yay!